I want to first of all thank all my brother bishops from the province uh, for coming to be part of this wonderful, wonderful expression of the love of God in Jesus uh, with their mission team. So it's a great thing to be here. So thank you. As I've been walking around in those 18 events, this is the 19th, some people have been asking me um, whether I have got a visa from York to be here. And I've said to them that my visa runs out at 5.30 this afternoon. So you can be relieved I'll be back in the other place. Now, in the 1980s, there was a, a television comedian who always loved to begin his sketches, whatever they were, by saying, I want to tell you a story. Do you remember him? What was his name? Yeah, Max Bygrave. I want to tell you a story. Now, honestly, tonight, I want to tell you a story. And this one is a true one. It's not one that you make up. In the summer of 1939, in the center of Paris, three young boys really wanted to entertain themselves. The school holidays have just begun and they had nothing to do. This is 1939. So they thought they'll go in the center, really, of the city and, you know, very rowdy and have a great time. And as they walked, they came across this wonderful, wonderful cathedral. And bo bo two boys were Roman Catholic, so they said, well, why don't we go in and tease the old man who's already sitting in there hearing confessions. Let's go in. So they went in, and there was a third boy who was a Jewish boy. And they went in, and um, they said, yeah, we, we better go and start making confessions of the sins we have never committed. So that they said, ah, but the priest will get very angry with us. Anyway, one of them said, yeah, I dare him, let me go in. So he knelt down by the confessional and starts to say all kinds of things he's ever done, which was so terrible, make your hair stand on ends. Sorry, I don't have much, but, um, <laughs> and anyway, and he did this. And he got away, and he thought, oh, lovely. Sunday said the Jewish boy, now you can really, really confess some awful things. Well, he said, I don't mind, I'm a Jew. This business of confession does not affect me. So he goes, and he leans down and begins to make his confession. And the old priest suddenly realized, by the way, I think these boys are having me on. They're really having me on. So he said, okay. In order to show that you are sorry, I want you to go and stand in front of that big cross and say these words. You did all this for me and I don't give a damn. Shout at the man hanging on that cross. You did all this for me and I don't give a damn. And the boy went, you know, pulled out himself his right height and says, the man hanging on the cross, you did this for me and I don't give a damn. Oh, I got away with it, he thought. Gave it out a third time, second time. You did this for me and I don't. And his voice faltered. He did this for me and I don't give a damn. They told him three times. He goes for the third time. You did this for me and I... Tears started coming down his face. As he looked at this man who was crucified, and all he could see was love, it was an invitation that whatever you've ever done wrong, actually I died for you. And you can be my friend, I can give you life, you can be forgiven, you can have hope, hope for the future. And this little 13 year old called Aaron knelt down, wept and wept and wept. Well, the following Easter, Aaron was baptized. And as time went on, he then was ordained and became a priest. And this bishop who told this story, Cardinal Jean-Marie Lustiga, said, I know that story is true. I was that 13 year old boy. And as I looked at the man who was crucified, I realized it wasn't just for himself, it was for me. 
He took all my pain. He took all my grief. He took all the things in my life that were not right. They were nailed on that cross. And that day he said, I found peace. I found joy. I found new life. Yes, I've been raised as a Jew. But I looked at this crucified man. And all I could see was clearly, absolutely God hanging on there saying, You're welcome. You're loved. You are loved. And dear friends, I've given you a card. As you came in, it was handed to you. Depicting the actual cross on which Aaron, a 13 year old, later on becoming Cardinal Jean Malie Rustiga and becoming Archbishop, actually, of Notre Dame. A picture of the man crucified on that cross. So please, will you take it out and look at it? I can see some people here haven't got one. People who got these, please, could you make sure everybody has got one? Okay. Okay. Now you look at it. This is what Aaron said. You did this for me and I don't give a damn. Now what I want you to do is to bend it. This is Blue Peter time. Bend it at the sort of thing at the bottom. New words up here. You've done it yet? You did this for me and I give you my all. Now either you're going to stick with the old message. You did this for me and I don't give a damn. But you look at this crucified guy, who for your sake, he took your place and dies, and of course the story goes, he rises again, that he may be given new life and forgiven. You did this for me and I don't give a damn. If it is true, you now want to be like Aaron, who realized that he wanted to give his life to this man who died on the cross for him. At the bottom of that, you did this for me and I did nothing. There is a little, a little what thing. You can peel away. Can you peel away that little thing? You can peel it off. You need a bit of nails if you haven't got too much trouble. Something comes off the top of it. Something like that. And we do not want to foul this wonderful city. So make sure the little piece you peel away, you hold it and take it with you home, please. And when you've done that, and you reach the stage which wants to say, you did this for me, and I give you my all, bend it over. And it should stay like that. Can you bend it? And it should stay there. You did this for me, and I give you my all. To be a Christian is not about believing things about God. It is not even about going to church, although that actually helps you to grow in your faith. To be a Christian is to realize that on the cross, Jesus died for you, and that he's inviting you to give you his own life, the very life by which he was raised from the dead. He wants the Holy Spirit to come and live in your life so that you could become a new person. Paul writes that everybody in Christ, they become a new creation, totally new. Now some of you are going to say to me, but I was born in a Christian home. Isn't that sufficient? Well, a better man than me said something wonderful. His name is Billy Graham. He said that when you're born in a garage, does that turn you into a motor car? <laughs> By being born in a garage, you don't become a motor car. You've got to be made into one. The same is true. You've got to be made a Christian by the Holy Spirit of Christ coming into your life as he forgives you for things done wrong in the past with his new life in the present and hope for the future. And I've been showing people that really to be a Christian is to come away from this. I used to use the right hand and people who are left-handed always complain. So I'm now going to use the left hand. <laughs> now this glove actually fits on my left hand. Supposing I say to this glove, wave. It can't do it. I can show it how to wave. I can give an example. 
Being an archbishop, I can command it in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Wave! I can even regularly take you to church. I can sell out of prayers to it. It just is not capable of doing it. Of course, I can put my hand, a little bit of it, but not fully. Bit, and I say to wave, and all it ever does is to flap, 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 flap. Have you met people like that? These are what I call the flap abouts. They know a little bit about God, they know a little bit about Jesus, the story is still vague, but actually they haven't quite yet put their life in the life of Jesus. They haven't allowed him to have his way. What my glove needs, and what you and I need, is to fully invite Christ to come into our life, to fill every part of our life. So when I say to my glove wave, hello, I can even make a victory sign, all right? And the reason is, there is life now in it. To be a Christian is to have your life evaded by God in the power of the Holy Spirit, feeling every part of your being and daily changing you to become more like Jesus. My friends, it was, I was 10 years old when that message became very clear. And I gave my life to Christ and he came in and the following morning I found myself saying to my mother, I'm sorry, forgive me for the things I've done wrong. I found telling my dad, please, I'm sorry I've done this and that and the other. And ever since that, then 57 years ago, I am absolutely obsessed with Jesus. I want really everything that I want to do, I want to feel about, to be nothing about by Christ because he has made me his own. He has filled my life and day by day is changing me to be more like Christ. And the question is very simple. He did this for you. Are you saying you don't give a damn or you're going to say I give you my all? And when you come, he'll forgive you. You saw in that sketch, you'll be embraced. And his life which he had will be a gift freely given to you. And day by day you can grow and become more like him. Now, some of you have been going to church for a number of years. It's quite possible. Today you are saying, I get it at last. And I'm going to be inviting people to come here. And when they come here, a number of things are going to happen to them. First of all, they're going to be given a book called Start a New Life, which explains how we really begin to come into this newness of life. So all the bishops and their teams have been given these books. They'll be coming here and giving them to you. And there is another book. Not only do you need to come and let Christ be first in your life, you daily also want to be filled with his spirit. Day by day. Pastor Spurgeon was asked by a young man, why do we always need to be filled with the Holy Spirit? And he said, because we daily leak. <laughs> you see, my dear friends, sometimes because we don't confess Christ, sometimes there are wrong things we've done which have not been confessed, we have not put our relationships right with others, that actually hinders this life in the Spirit. Because the Spirit comes to reproduce the life of Christ in you. And the Holy Spirit is also the enemy of division. So in the end, day by day, you go to pray that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. So these books are going to be given to you. We will pray for you. We will encourage you. And in order to do this, you're going to find, when I survey the wondrous cross, could the band please come back here?